Hello there, it's Sandy, and today I'm going to talk about graphite shading over top of Copic. And this is one of those where I thought I had an idea of what I was going to teach with this new stamp set from Trinity, and it went a different way. Sometimes that happens with the artwork. And in this particular case, it was going to be about mainly shading on Desert Storm cardstock, but focusing on one gnome facing toward the light and one gnome facing away from the light. Because a lot of people will get the idea in their head that you always shade a face in a certain way. And in this particular case, that's not really how it works if the, they're both in the same scene. Now, if you've got two different cards, you can certainly apply that kind of theory to it. But on one picture, the light source is going to be the same for both, which is off to the right hand side. So the gnome on the left has the shading on the left side of everything and there's going to be highlights on the front. The gnome on the right is going to have shadows on the left even though you would think that whole beard should be really white white but it's going to be in shadow. I'm going to start by putting some Copic marker down for the shadow areas and whenever you're working on paper like this that is a color, whether it's Desert Storm or something else, you need to adjust the colors that you choose. And here I'm using colors that are darker than I probably would if I were using a white piece of paper. And all these colors are going to be over on the blog if you need to know what those are. See the shading on this guy on the right? All of that dark area is where the shadow is because the light is being blocked by his head. Whereas the other one, the, the one on the left, has a lot of light hitting that beard. What I decided to do was use a white pencil. Since I'm using a colored cardstock, white pencil is going to show up nicely. It doesn't really do a whole lot on a white paper. But here it's going to do a lot. And I'm putting the highlights kind of all over the beard. So it feels like a white beard. But I'm going to be adding more to it because I went overboard with the white pencil. So if you do go overboard with it, there are things you can do to fix it. The gnome on the right, remember he's got the highlights are coming from the right hand side. There's going to be a little light that's going to curl around the edges because light does do a little bit of bending. But what I'm going to use here is a graphite pencil. This is a 9B, my favorite 9Bs. I love a good strong 9B. You'll get less of an effect with like a number two pencil if that's what you've got, but you can still do it with that. And I'm adding in some very fine details with a very sharp pencil. And I can cover over some of those areas where I went overboard with the white and also add in some detail and some darkness. And on this gnome on the right hand side, notice how the shading is growing and getting deeper around the shadow side. The shadow side on both of these, on the whole image, is on the left-hand side. That's just what it is because of the direction the light is coming from. The theory is the same, even though in your brain it doesn't always work that way because a lot of people just think, oh, well, the highlight should be on the face. Now here I noticed that the color had lightened enough that I wanted to darken the gnome on the right hand side because he really wouldn't have much light bouncing onto that face. Might be a little tiny bit landing on the top of the nose or the top of that cheek. But once it was dry, I was able to see that. So when you're working on a colored paper, make sure you double check the previous shading that you had already done because some of that may change as it dries, as the liquid comes out of the paper itself. So I'm going to use a couple of different reds to shade the hats. And in this particular card, this particular picture, the focus is going to be on those wonderful beards as well as the ornaments. The hats are not going to be as crucial. There's, there's some shading going on there, but it's not going to be, you know, I, I often will say that you should focus on the most important part. Like whatever you can convince the viewer of is realistic then do that. Make sure the viewer can see exactly what you're putting your focus on 
and don't worry about the other parts. The hats are not crucial here. They're just in an adjunct accessory. The shoes that are facing off to the left are both in shadow and the light is hitting the tops of those shoes, but the shoes on the right, which is their left foot, left feet, those are turned a little bit more. So the light's going to catch on them just a little bit more. So they will be lighter color. I realized I forgot one part of the beard. He's, he's got a seriously long beard hanging way down behind the ornament. So I added a little bit of that and then added some shading onto the shoes, the top of the shoes. But again, those are not a major portion of this. So I'm just going to put some color in there just to define what those shapes are, as well as the arms and legs. I need just enough to be convincing. And then I moved on to working on the ornaments. And I didn't really test out my ornament colors on this. I wanted a variety of greens to make these kind of vintage looking ornaments because they have that vintage design style. So they came out a little on the funky side because a green on top of a brown is going to make a greenish brown. That's just what it's going to do. Coloring on any kind of a colored paper is going to take on the tone of whatever is in that paper. If you want pink and yellow ornaments, this is not the paper to use for that particular one. So you'll want to think about the tones that you want overall. But I was trying to figure out how I was going to do the shading. My idea in my head, and this was where I had a thought of what I was going to teach in this video. My idea was to put the base colors down, then go through and add a wash of a gray for the shadow. Because a lot of times that will work and it works a lot on white paper. I did not know how it was not going to work on this particular picture because I was doing this on a colored cardstock. So unfortunately that lesson failed, but I learned some other things and hopefully you'll learn some things through this as well. So I've got all my different crazy greens in here. And if these don't make you think of like grandma's vintage weird green ornaments, I don't know what will. So there you go. Here I am adding my gray color and it sort of added a shadow to it but not in a real kind of strong way. What I planned on doing anyway, though, was to add a darker hue of each one of these greens on top of that area. The whole lesson in my head, and maybe you can try this on white paper, was use a light gray to indicate the overall shape of the shadow. Because if you know how to shade a circle in a sphere, then if you're trying to shade all those individual little pieces, all those individual colors, then it's often going to be a little difficult to figure out how to do that across all those colors and make them all work together. So one gray will tie it together. In this particular case, I went over it with all those colors following that gray that I had done, but I realized I needed something stronger and brighter for a highlight. So I used a white pencil to add the highlight onto the ornament. And that made me realize, wait a minute, the shadow worked really well using the graphite on the beards. So I wonder if it would work here. You know, this is a risk when you're doing something like this, that it's going to fail and it's going to wreck the whole thing. I don't think it did wreck the whole thing. The ornaments are still very much in that vintage colorway but all of that shape now comes together. It looks like a really round ornament because I, I did the unified highlight with the white pencil and the unified shadow with the graphite. So the ornament on the right, I'm doing the same thing again using the darker colors. I skipped the gray phase in that one since I realized that didn't really work. But I'm using those darker colors to get a little bit of the shadow color on the left, but there's not much difference because of the nature of the paper. But as soon as I start adding the white highlight with the pencil on one side, and then I'll add the same graphite on the left, I start getting that roundness. And it also just pulls that whole ornament together. So all of those different colored shapes end up looking like they're painted onto one ornament, as opposed to when you're doing every single section in a different color, 
it can start to feel like it's a not a smooth surface, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Because each part, it's really hard to shade them all so they're equally shaded on all sides. Once I was all finished, I added a super white highlight with, of course, a white gel pen because everything at Christmas time needs some white gel pen from me and added some really hard highlights for reflections onto the ornaments themselves. For the finishing of the card, I added the sentiment onto a panel and popped it and stamped it a little bit off to the side. And I wanted something to take that real estate up on the left so that there would be something that looked intentional there. So how about a piece of thread? This is just some six ply embroidery thread. The card is popped up or the panel is popped up onto the card base, rounded on the bottom. And then there's no extra space at the top, just on the bottom and the two sides. So there's my finished card. Hope this was helpful to you to see me walk through some ideas in my own head. And I hope you'll try shading with some graphite sometime. Take care. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>